and it just says we're at 49% of our our budget. Oh, our electric bill. Electric bill, yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> I can answer that. Like yeah. Much. So the electric budget is based on the prior year costs, and costs for PG for us have gone up because we're on time of use. And so they they raised rates. I don't know. It's like 10 or 12 percent mm -hmm. since we did this budget. So we're so we're a little behind in where we should be at this point. Yeah, we're on track to have about one hundred twenty thousand dollars like right. bill, and I think it's almost fifty percent more. Okay, I I was just curious because that's a significant increase. We also have a mid-year budget adjustment um, sometimes in January or December. And usually if things uh, are brought up, there's backup to those items and information such as that is. Okay. The other item that seems to me, no offense, Christiana, is our legal fees are seem extremely high. So I'm looking at page 179. I just in, comp in compared to our what we budgeted for, <clears throat> so page one seventy nine line or item th or three 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 you know, seventy five percent. Then we've got and then and that's both for um, the water and the wastewater. So then on 181 to 27, we're at 51% you know, of budget. Um, and then we got HR. Also, that's, it just seems like we're way high what we budgeted. And especially on that HR deal, it's interesting because the wastewater and the water seem to be pretty you know, to the same amount. I don't know if that's just being split. No, they're not split, they're two separate matters. Um, but for, without having the actual um, detailed bills in front of me, I don't have any way of discussing that, but I'm ha no. happy to go through okay, the just, bills and, and kind of parse out, you know, no, what just, the higher no. costs are versus- Yeah, I don't want to get into any details, but it just jumped yeah. out that we're way ahead of our budget, or what we anticipated, and if we keep going, we're- Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a really expensive. So in, in regard to like HR, that's not something that we're that you really budget a certain amount per month. So it might be that we know we have a problem that we're trying to deal with in the beginning of the year and then don't anticipate anything for the rest of the year. So it might be we might get to 100% in six months and then stay at 100% for the rest of the year. So it's not really something that we can. Right, I really yeah. okay. budget that way. All right, um, it's not really something that we want to have a high budget for. We hope for not not having. I'm sure we do, but it's but that really applies sort of to all all legal. It's something that we have a little bit going on every month, but not something that we anticipate having huge bills um, at any particular time. And then one last thing was on the this is on the the water district 182 utility rate design study. So we budgeted 20,000, we're already at 30,000. So we're 154% over budget. And I thought that study was, we kind of talked about a little bit, but it was more or less last, last year. Yeah, and um, when you and I met the other day, we talked about that. And I haven't had a chance to look at that. Okay. So hopefully, by the time this comes back to the board in December, I'll have a, an answer for that. Okay. All right. That's all I got. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> is there any other questions, directors? No? No, it's not. Okay. Is there any public comment? No? Okay. All right. Moving on to next item. Authorize a cost recovery agreement between Fire Recovery USA LLC and the San Miguel Fire Department, Resolution 2023-45. Table from September 28th board meeting. Recommended review and approved. Okay, good evening again. 
So uh, I was not here for the last meeting. This ended up on consent. I pulled out of consent and now we're back. So uh, Fire, Fire Recovery USA LLC provides uh, cost recovery services at no charge to San Miguel Fire Department unless the department fails to meet a minimum of six billable incidents annually. And the annual fee for not meeting that is uh, $250. Fire Recovery USA LLC collects 22% of uh, cost recovered via their services and there is a $500 startup fee. And to further the discussion, the San Miguel Community Service District has been involved with Cost Recovery USA LLC since 2015. Uh, no information has been forwarded, no claims have been collected, no action has been taken. So this is a re-engagement of something that happened eight years ago. The department is always trying to explore avenues to recover or to um, generate revenue without you know, tax purposes and, and any, any uh, cost to the citizens of San Miguel. There was a lot of talk at the last meeting regarding what these services were to be collected for and how they were to be managed. And if you read the, the body of the resolution exhibit A for their, their services rendered, it clearly states what the, what the services are. We're looking for vehicle accidents, vehicle extrication, traffic control, uh, structure fires, um, in, investigation services. And I was having a discussion with uh, Director Gregory previous prior to the meeting, and uh, I do go out on investigations. I am a, a slow fist member and will get a page out and I'll go to a different jurisdiction and I will lend my expertise in the fire investigation. This gives us a mechanism to actually bill for my time versus doing it out of kindness of our hearts. The intent of this is to be able to capture funds that are paid for via insurance. Everybody pays their auto insurance and there's a very small percentage that's paid for these mechanisms. A lot of this goes uncollected and the insurance companies are the benefactors of that lack of action. I provided a list of agencies that are, um, that service are provided by Cost Recovery USA LLC. And you'll see it's a broad spectrum of agencies from small volunteer departments to large municipal departments. In our particular area, um, the cities have mechanisms in place to capture these funds, but the cities have police departments. We don't have a police department. So the police department has mechanisms to go and they, they collect fees and fines and things of that nature and they, and they filter it through the proper channels. So this is in lieu of having a police department or some sort of collection mechanism for that purpose. And you know, 78% of something is better than 100% of nothing. The, the focus clearly is on incidents that are beyond our district boundaries, but that is not completely accurate. Because if a bad player comes into town at 100 miles an hour and crashes into the, the, a structure, that is within the district boundaries, but that bad player came from a different area. So now they're driving in the influence, they wreck a vehicle and we're committed to, to an incident within our jurisdiction. On the flip side of that, it doesn't prevent outside agencies from billing our residents because they have their own mechanisms in place. So we can't stop them from doing this exact same thing. There was some confusion I was able to, to work through um, via the, the video and, and trying to uh, attend the meeting remotely. And there's nothing in place for medical services. That is a farce. Medical services, we have an ambulance reimbursement contract with uh, EMSA. We get uh, from the county, we get a small amount of money annually for ambulance reimbursements. That's to cover our medical supplies and stuff like that. We don't charge the citizens of San Miguel for any of our services. This is primarily focused for outside the district boundaries or bad players that come into the district. Say, for example, um, somebody is processing a chemical substance that is the, uh, prohibitive. I'm beating around the bush. If somebody's making honey oil in the district, which is marijuana extracted with butane, and they blow up their kitchen, which happens quite often, we should be able to be compensated for that. They're a bad player, they're a bad actor. It wasn't just simply an accident. It was clear negligence. So there's a line that has to be drawn as to, as to what appears to be um, worth pursuing and what does not appear to be worth pursuing and that should be at the discretion of the department 
Um, there was also discussions on collection actions. If you look through the document, I think it's 6.2, clearly says that the, the company, if they exhaust all avenues, they can pursue collection, but it's at our discretion. We could just say, no, we're, we're not gonna do that. We're, we're not gonna, you know, we're beating a dead horse at that point. We're not gonna get anywhere. But if somebody has a vehicle accident, for example, why did the uh, district office was shut down? Because we were chasing a, we weren't chasing, but we were involved in the pursuit of a subject who was involved in a felony stop that resulted in a vehicle accident that was north of the district. We were dispatched outside the district to provide medical support for whatever was needed for that incident. We were committed for three hours in the middle of the day. So why should the district, why should the taxpayers of the district foot the bill for a bad player outside the district? So we would be able to collect the vehicle information, the vehicle in, vehicle should be insured, and we could use that this mechanism to collect fees for that service rendered. Okay. Any questions? I'd be happy to answer. Yes, directors, any questions? Uh, I've got one. Uh, Mr. Young, I think our fire department is pretty well paid with the taxes that the people here at San Miguel pay. And as far as, call it double dipping or whatever, you're reimbursed for <clears throat> what you do by the taxpayers. And I don't think the taxpayers need to be responsible for anything else. Well, that's where you are 100% incorrect. I don't mind me saying so. The, the citizens of San Miguel pay property tax. We get 12.75% of that 1% of the property tax collected to protect the citizens within the San Miguel boundaries. Beyond the San Miguel boundaries, we get zero. Yet we go out and we provide a service. And I have drill down reports that I can tell you time, date, location, incidents, incident uh, type at nauseum of details of how many times we go out of our district to provide services that we are not compensated for. So double dipping is a complete falsehood. Um, people are paying car, people are paying auto insurance and the auto insurance company is not paying for the services rendered. So they are the, the benefactors of these unclaimed resources. And we're not talking a whole lot of money, but anything is going to help our situation. We are short staffed. We are short supplied. Last month, you approved a resolution for me to purchase a piece of $10,000 equipment. I appreciate that. We need it. Nobody cared about where the money came from. This would be a mechanism in place that we could put that money aside and we could put it to a vehicle replacement fund because we have wear and tear on those engines. We take an engine out on the highway and we sit for three hours with the crew. We don't turn that engine off. That engine stays running. So we have three hours of service time on that motor, potentially three hours of service time on that pump for a, for a structure fire, vehicle fire. So we have a heavy maintenance burden that's, that's attached to this. And it has nothing to do with the citizens of San Miguel. The citizens of San Miguel pay for service, re render the service. It's beyond our envelope or bad players coming into our area is what we're focused on. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, so um, I'm looking at this report here. It says mutual aid buyers who collected $27,500. This past month. That is okay. So, you, which report are you looking at? I could answer that easily. Page number. Yeah, it's a page number. Oh, uh, 171. 171. So, mutual aid fires, what you're looking at is we were sent down to San Bernardino County to service a master mutual aid campaign for the Rabbit Fire. The Rabbit Fire was a OES campaign fire, it was uh, sponsored or funded by the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. This has nothing to do with that. We do get compensated for, let, for sending crews out and working, and we do generate income like that, and we are compensated. We're compensated at a decent rate. What we're not compensated for is the day-to-day -day when we're out on the highway chasing, you know, whatever vehicle accident, vehicle fire. We spend countless hours up and down this highway on vehicle accidents and, and you know, calls of that nature. Okay, so you can answer a question. So we have our district, our community service area. Yes. And are there protections for every other area? I mean, like if you go, I know Camp Roberts has 
a deal if you go, I mean, so. Yeah, Camp Roberts says Camp Roberts Fire. We have, a, we have an auto aid agreement with Camp Roberts. We have an auto aid agreement with uh, the county, the unincorporated parts of San Francisco. So what, what does that mean? We, they come to us, we go to them. So let's say we have a fire over on Mission Lane somewhere, close to it, Pretty Smith, for example. That place burned. Um, county sends engines, Paso sends engines, because we need additional help. They can bill for that service. They're not billing us, they're not billing the district, they're billing the insurance holder of that property to compensate them for their time. But there's nothing to prevent us from doing that. You can't say as a board, no, we can't allow that to happen. It's not in your right to do that. So all we're looking for is the same advantage to be able to bill for services rendered beyond our district boundaries or for potentially discretionary items that happen within our district boundaries for bad players. And bad players would be drunk drivers causing accidents, things of that nature. We're not out to single any individual out you know, for any particular cause. It's just what was the burden of service and where was the burden of service uh, accrued. And then on the... Uh exhibit or the illicit costs, I see a lot where it says rates based on actual costs, but it has a whole list of, 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 of costs. Like for example, I think it was like on page 201, chief response bill $337 an hour for set up a command. Now is that, that doesn't seem like an actual cost. Well, if, if you were, what this is based on is a broad sword sweep of the, of the state and what the state rate would be for a chief officer to come out and establish command for an incident that may take one hour, may take three hours. So that would be a, a rate for services rendered on an average scale. Okay, because that, you know, $337 an hour, that's like $600,000 a year salary at the annual exit. So I guess my problem with this well, you have other burdens as well. You, you don't only have the, the burden of time for the for the individual, but you have, there's a vehicle involved. There's commands. Uh, well, that's all, that, this is, and that's, that's it's all encompassing. I mean, you know, there, there's, there's separate stuff for everything. For the vehicle, this, this is like a, this is for the chief. I mean, this, this thing, this, this is my problem with it. Is that, I think fire and police are underfunded. Okay, I think they're underfunded intentionally by the state, by the county. Okay, how many times do I hear, gosh, you gotta pass an increase of tax if we wanna have good fire and, and, and police protection. <clears throat> Public safety, in my opinion, should be the number one priority of government. And when stuff like this happens, basically, <clears throat> this is just another mechanism where kind of the public sector is enabling the government not to fund what they need to. And, you know, you say, yeah, they're going to build the insurance. Where does the insurance get their money? From the ratepayer. <clears throat> if, every, if every district, if every police department, everybody did this, it's going to jack up everybody's rates. You can't say, I mean, you know, if, if they're paying out more money, they're going to charge more money. And to me, the problem is that you're not getting the proper funding. I don't think anyone in this room is going to sit here and say they're not paying enough in taxes. Because the people in this state, in my opinion, are, are grossly paying way too much taxes. Because there's this money that's squandered. This county, the number one priority is homeless. It should be fire and it should be police. It should be. You guys are getting starved. <clears throat> but now it's like, okay, now we're going to go after insurance companies. We're going to go after this. I just, you know, you might be, a, you know, you're a good guy, but this, this is open to a lot of abuse in my opinion. Some guy could go out there and say, hey, man, I went to this wreck, and I did this, and I did that, and I did that, and I look at that, I really jacked up the deal, and look how much money we're gonna make. That's not it may not be you, but, 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 that, but that's human nature. I mean, you know, that's human nature. This could turn into a money-making scheme. I, I don't like it, I don't like the fact that it's gonna go up at minimum 7.1% 7, 7 a year. Minimum. What has the cost of living gone up this last year, 15%? It'll go up 15%. It's based on, if you, you read the resolution, it's based on the Commute Consumer Price Index. It's yeah, the so highest of that or the 7.1. So if inflation drops down to two, it's 7.1. So this deal, I don't know. I, I, 
uh, adamantly opposed to it. I think the people, we pay for our fire, we pay for our police, we don't need an extra burden of getting charged. You know, if you want to change, change the people in the county, change the people in Sacramento, and, you know, get, get the proper funding. But this, to me, uh, I'm very much opposed to it. By, by not approving this, it, it's not going to change anything in Sacramento. It's not going to change anything in San Luis Obispo. All it's going to do is possibly assist the, the people of San Miguel to have a slightly higher level of fire service. And if this you know, is if the, you, not a mechanism that you choose to follow through with to assist, then clearly vote against it. Vote your conscience. You know, I mean, if you can't afford to leave our community, don't. What's that? If you can't afford to leave our district, don't. Right? I mean, no, I mean, that, is, that is not acceptable. That's not how the fire service works. We, we cannot not assist others and expect others to assist us. So um, let me just clarify, um, Director Baker, are you, are you aware of how, how tight our parameters are? So, oh, I don't know how tight they are. So, you know, on Cross Canyons Road, uh, yeah. Just on the other side of the street. I know. You're out of the I, I, I get that. Yeah. But see, I guess my point is that is what the people of the state are, want to pay for. And if they're not funding you enough, then I say stay in your district. Just service us. Don't go outside. Because that's what the people, that's what when they vote, when they vote for all these people in Sacramento and the county, that's what they're saying. You know, they, they don't care about fire, they don't care about police. So, you know. <clears throat> Stay in our district. If we can't afford to leave it, stay in it. Because that's what the people in this state want, in my opinion. Well, so just to clarify, the state doesn't fund local fire departments that are run by their own public entities, it, unless you have Cal Fire as your fire station. So this public entity and having its own fire department has committed to funding its own fire department. There's grants that the state has, and there's some supplements that come in through um, government programs, but the fire department is required to fund itself, and it's not a state-dependent fire department. It's a San Miguel Community Services District I, 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 I fire department. They get the 1% of the 1%. That's the minimum. They're guaranteed that much. That's like a minimum. Just like public education is guaranteed with the 38 or 40%. They're, they're guaranteed that much. The state legislatures or the county supervisors wanted to give additional funding to police and fire, they could do it if they so desire. Absolutely. Okay, that's my point. They don't want to. They want to dump money into all these other crazy things. But that would be just a want to be crude. But anyway, um, and it's insane. And and that and that's the problem, in my opinion. And by doing this, we're just, we're just enabling the state to to not fund because we're going to, now we're going to take it from insurance companies. And the insurance company is going to raise everybody's rate. It's just another tax on the, on the people. I mean, it, but anyway, my Well, we are clearly not going to adjust our master mutual aid and automatic aid agreement with the county and the state. This is not going to be a make or break for that. We are not going to not go to our neighbors, and our neighbors are not going to not come to us. So. And I believe you, that's the way it should be. But you know, I think we've taken enough time. Yeah. If you choose to vote, take public comment. I've, uh, but I'll be happy to continue. I've been asked to you know, keep this at a minimum. Okay. Uh, do you have a comment? My comment would be um, because uh, Director, because this is very um, contentious and it is a very passionate subject, that it may be uh, prudent to table this item and to hear from also the, uh, the board president when he is well. So we can then hear from the entire board at that time. Um, regardless, I do think that funding our fire department needs to be a big goal. Um, Director Baker, you talked about funding um, and how the state the priorities are. Um, I have a little bit of history, history buff when it comes to this thing. So around 1990, uh, the ERAP shift actually happened, and that took a lot of funding out of uh, fire departments and special districts and put it towards uh, school funding. So we look at actually using ERAP, things ERAP 1 and ERAP 2. That was funding that was going to fire departments. So now we're at this point where it's like, well, we need to try and fight the money back for you know the schools. And there's other things that I also proposed about talking about the tax rate area and stuff. And those are longer term conversations that we need to have as a board. Um, and there's other things too about mutual aid that are of financial benefit to this district. Um, some of the campaign fires we've gone on have been a very big financial benefit to our district. Um, 
And they've been a safety benefit to the state. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, but those are longer term conversations that you're probably having to work on or a, a different item. As of right now. Just to be clear, this is not a hill I want to die on. I could, you know, you do what you want. I'm bringing you the information. I'm trying to provide a mechanism to assist the fire department to have some sort of potential funding source. Do with what you will. It's not a hill I want to die on. I just want to get my point across. Well, just out of curiosity on, on your report that for this month, how many items on that? Are there any that would have been built? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, every month we have we have items that are vehicle accidents for being up on Highway 101 for a bad actor who was in a felony pursuit, crashed a vehicle, and two people fled with firearms. And we were staged for three hours, waiting to make sure that law enforcement weren't injured. Um, vehicle accident over the side coming off the Highway 101 just uh, before the San Miguel off ramp. Hundred thousand dollar truck. You think that guy can't afford car insurance? Crashed his truck. Tire flew off, caused another accident, that guy bailed, bad actor. We're out there in the middle of the night chasing him, trying to figure out you know, if anybody's injured. So the, that's just two examples. The other point though, that you are an inspector, you said- I'm an investigator. Investigator, I'm sorry. So without passing this resolution, you have no mechanism, you said you had no mechanism to yeah, so, capture that. Yeah, I, I belong to an organization called SLOPIS, San Luis Obispo Fire Investigation Strike Team, and, and we get a, a text countywide page, we assemble, and uh, they've come to us, I've gone to them, and we do investigations. This gives us a mechanism to recover some of that money. Now, without that, I'm not going to not go. I'm going to continue to go because they come to us. We can't just throw our sucker in the sand and say we're not coming. It, it's it's not it's not being a uh, a good neighbor and a good player, in my opinion. Okay. So, um, Director Davis, do you have a comment? Uh, I just want to make a motion to table this until a later date. All right, let me open it up to public comment and oh, then okay. we can look at that. Is there any public comment? No? Okay. Uh, Director Davis, you have a motion? Yeah, I want to make a motion to table this to a later date until we can get a little more uh, clarification and information. Okay. Um, just so. Yes, I'll ask for that second, but just so that we're all clear, this is the second time it's been brought to the board. So uh, let's try and get our information together. So we have a, a, a good um, voting. Um, yes, is there a second? I'll second the table. Okay. There's a motion on the table by Director Davis to table this item. And second by Director Calvins. Dr. Collins? Yes. Dr. Baker? No. Dr. Davis? Yes. Dr. Gregory? Yes. Passes three, one, one absent. And please feel free to send your questions to me so I can answer them. So when we come back again, we could just put this to bed and go one way or another with it. I think we've spent quite a bit of time and Christina's time is valuable. Yeah, I think it's more philosophical <laughs> deal than for me. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah. But if any of the board members have questions, please send, let me know what you're looking for and I'll provide you that information. Sure. I think maybe the possibility of, you know, if that's not favorable, Director Baker, then maybe an alternative, you know, what, how else? So maybe that's uh, something to look at. Okay, moving on to Thank uh, you. number three. <laughs> yes. <coughs> Approve repairs to San Lawrence Terrace well equipment including related budget adjustment and transfer from capital reserves resolution 2023-51 thank you this item is to approve uh, the costs associated with replacing the well motor well pump uh, the column or the drop pipe for the well and the cost of removing it and putting it back in the total cost for all the repairs, including the, the initial removal and putting it back in, it is $35,390, with $19,580 being equipment costs and $15,540 being labor and equipment to remove and replace it. Um, 
this has gone around a couple months, but essentially we'll be able to reuse uh, 120 feet of four inch uh, serta lock, which is plastic pipe that we have purchased for a different well and have removed from that well. Um, and that will cover almost half of the pipe that's needed to replace the entire column. So there is some savings in that, and not having to buy the entire the entire length of pipe. But uh, the request at this time is to reply to uh, approve resolution 2023-51 and for three thousand or thirty thousand five thirty five thousand three hundred ninety dollars and uh, approve the uh, budget adjustments and transfer as listed in the staff report. Okay, directors. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm for this, by the way, Charlotte, but just out of curiosity, what if we didn't replace that pump? I mean, I mean, the system, we're servicing it now without it, right? We have the ability. So, hypothetically, if we were to not repair this pump, then the system would work fine. It is a backup to our wells. We do use we do use it regularly in the system. It's not, if we didn't have it, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it does uh, give us more flexibility in our operation. Right, so this is another hypothetical. What if you took that, I know there's a big pressure problem on the terrace. Okay, what if you took that 35,000 and spent it on some, you know, I don't know, booster or pressure tank or whatever to increase the pressure at the terrace? I don't know. Um, so hypothetically, if we were to do that, um, we could take that 35,000 and put it towards uh, the booster pump project. Um, obviously, it would further that project. However, not repairing that well, um, we would have to report it as inactive. Um, lose what water rights? Pardon? <laughs> lose our water rights? Oh, no, that worked out with us. Um, so if we report it as inactive, it, it removes the, the testing requirements. However, in order to bring it out of back as active, um, it's a much more difficult process, almost like you're putting a new well in, because everything has to be retested, and you know, test the casing, then you have to put the pump equipment in anyway. Um, so in the long term, the goal would be to replace this well, or not replace this well, I'm sorry, to repair this well, and build the booster pump station so if the bridge were ever to be washed out again, that we would be able to use that well to fill this, that system on that side. Um, you know, hypothetically though, if we weren't able to repair this well, we could still move forward with building the boost pump station and we would still get water from the west side of the river. Um, the only problem there is if the bridge gets washed out and we don't have a water source on the east side. You know, there is a possibility of bringing other wells into the district. If those come into the district, then this is um, a less necessary well, but we don't have a timeline on that, so. Thank you. 